Hi, this is Eric White. This is the fourth and last screencast in a series of screencasts on adding and updating tables of contents in OpenXML Word Processing ML documents. In this screencast, I'm going to show how you can populate the table of contents using Word Automation Services. In the first screencast, I showed the markup of table of contents. I talked about field markup and I pointed you out to some other screencasts if you want to learn more about field markup. In the second screencast, I presented some example code that makes it easy to create a table of contents. That example code is going to be part of the Power Tools for OpenXML project. You can download that sample code in the blog post that introduces the second screencast. Populating the table of contents is not an easy task. First thing is that you actually have to repaginate the entire document. The entries in the table of contents have a page ref field and that page ref field has to have the correct page number. This means that a layout engine is involved. Layout engines are extraordinarily complex pieces of software. In the first and second screencast, I showed how you can insert a placeholder for the table of contents, and then you can set an element in the settings part of a document that tells Word that the next time the document is opened, all fields should be recalculated, and the table of contents is a field, so that means the table of contents would be recalculated. I also showed how if you open up a document that has that element set in the settings part, then Word puts up a modal dialog box telling you that the document contains fields that may refer to other files. Do you want to update fields in the document? If the user responds yes to that modal dialog box, then the table of contents is updated appropriately. But this may not be the user experience that you really want. In the third screencast, I showed how you can use Word Automation to repaginate and populate a table of contents. After you have used Word Automation to repaginate and populate the table of contents, then when that document is opened by your users, they won't be shown that modal dialog box. In this screencast, I'm going to show how you can do the same task using Word Automation Services. Word Automation and Word Automation Services are two very different technologies that have very similar names and have some overlapping functionality. Some time ago I wrote a blog post on the difference between Word Automation and Word Automation Services. You can find that blog post here. In a nutshell, Word Automation uses C Sharp that uses some primary interop assemblies that are these .NET assemblies that then use the COM interface to the Word application itself. Using Word Automation, you can open documents. Once you have them open, you can go into the documents and modify them. You can save them. But make no doubt about it, when you are using Word Automation, the Word application itself is running. You can specify in a Word Automation application that the Word application should not be visible. However, even if you specify that, there are circumstances where Word needs to put up a modal dialog box to report an error condition, and if it needs to put up that modal dialog box, it will become visible. You may have a scenario where you need to repaginate and populate tables of contents for hundreds or thousands of documents. This is really a server-side scenario. This is not what Word was designed for. The issues around automating Word on the server are well known. You can find a KB article on Microsoft.com that details the issues around Word automation. You can find that KB article here. In contrast, Word Automation Services is a service application in SharePoint 2010. Its main purpose is to provide unattended server-side document conversions. This means that you can, in a deterministic fashion, convert hundreds or thousands or even hundreds of thousands of documents from one format to another. 
The biggest issue is around processing of invalid documents. If Word or Word Automation Services sees certain types of invalid documents, it could cause them to use more memory, it could cause them to slow down. The service application infrastructure in SharePoint 2010 takes care of all the heavy lifting in making sure that Word Automation Services operates properly, takes advantage of all the CPU power that you want to assign to it, and so on. Word Automation Services can read these formats, OpenXML, Doc, RTF, HTML, and XML, and it can write all of the above formats, and it can also write PDF and XPS. In addition to reading and writing formats, as I mentioned, Word Automation Services can repaginate documents, update the TOC, TOF, and TOA. Those are really just a special case of the larger issue of recalculating fields. And finally, for those of you who have found AltChunk to be a useful technology to pull together varieties of content into a single document, Word Automation Services can do the processing of AltChunk so that you have an OpenXML document with ordinary OpenXML markup, such as paragraphs and runs. Let's take a look at Word Automation Services in action. I'm running locally on a SharePoint server. The example code uses the SharePoint server object model. For those of you who are SharePoint developers, you know what that implies. This code has to run directly on the server. Here is the SharePoint site. In preparation to run this example code, I've created two document libraries. One is entitled before and one is entitled after. And there's nothing in those document libraries at this moment. Here's the example code. As with the example that I presented that uses Word Automation to populate the table of contents, this example also creates a list of files to process. And at the bottom it calls populate reference tables using Word Automation Services. Here is that method. It does a bit of setup, including getting the site collection and the site. It then makes sure that the before and after document libraries exist. And here's the bit of code that iterates through all of the documents that have had the table of contents inserted into them, but the table of contents are not populated. Here's the bit of code that uploads those into the before document library. Here is the code to start Word Automation Services. It creates a new conversion job. It sets this field, update fields, equal to true. When you set this equal to true, it wouldn't matter whether you had that update fields element set in the settings part. The fields will be updated. It gets the before and after folder and adds the folder to the list of tasks that Word Automation Services needs to do. So Word Automation Services is going to process every document in the before folder and save in the after folder. It then starts the job. This code to create a conversion job status object, this is how you monitor the progress of the conversion. The code goes into a loop where it sleeps for five seconds and then checks the status. If there were any failed documents, the example program prints out an error message and quits. Given that you are most likely using this in a document generation scenario where you are generating documents that you know to be valid and then are updating the table of contents, if any of those documents fail to convert, that probably indicates a more severe problem in your document generation process. The code then deletes all the items in the before folder. It then iterates through all the items in the after folder and saves them to local storage. And then it deletes all the files in the after folder, leaving the document libraries in the state that they were when the example started. Let's run the example.
your performance will depend on a lot of different factors, including the size of your servers and how you've configured your servers. The example's completed. Let's go look at the documents that have their table of contents generated. As before, test01.docx is a document with update fields set to true. When we start Word, Word will put up that modal dialog box. If I open up test01-converted using Word Automation Services, as expected, it opens without putting up that modal dialog box. One final note, as a developer, you want to configure Word Automation Services in certain ways. You want to configure Word Automation Services so that it will run a new job every single minute. When you're deploying an application that uses Word Automation Services, then you may need to deploy it in a variety of different ways, and there are a lot of considerations about how you configure Word Automation Services. Some time ago, I wrote an article on MSDN called Developing with SharePoint 2010 Word Automation Services. That article details a lot of the points that you need to pay attention to when configuring Word Automation Services. You can find that article here. To show you what I mean by this, I'm going to go into Central Administration, click Manage Service Applications, go down to the bottom of that list and click on Word Automation Services. Here are the settings that you can use to configure Word Automation Services. There are two key numbers that you're going to want to pay attention to here. One is the frequency with which to start conversions in minutes. And as a developer, you will want to set this to one so that you can get the results of your tests quickly. If you're writing an application that has some level of interactivity with end users, you also may want to set this to one so that you can present results back to end users as quickly as possible. Another setting you'll want to pay attention to is conversion processes. This should be set to one less than the physical number of processors on your server. And finally, you'll need to set the number of conversions to start per conversion process. The MSDN article that I referred to gives more information on setting the number of conversions to start. This is the end of this series of screencasts on setting and updating tables of contents in Word Processing ML documents. As usual, the example code that I presented in this screencast is attached to the blog post on OpenXML Developer.